Pause a moment, shoulders balanced, hips balanced, and breathing steady. And let's bring the hands together, in prayer position at the heart. A little bit of pressure on the palms. And any dedication, any intention you'd like to offer? And we'll sing just one sound of Om. Nice full breath in. breath in uh, with your exhalation releasing the hands you can open the eyes um, we're going to move to our child's pose and before you do you might just lean back and stretch the legs in front of you uh, just giving the ankles a little bit of pointing and flexing a uh, little side to side windshield wipers with the toes to free the knees and then tucking the feet to one side uh, we'll meet again balasana uh, hips to the heels and let the arms rest out in front of you unless you know that's difficult for the shoulders and let your your forehead softly touch the ground and of course as you arrive there's always little adjustments to the ankles to the knees little shifting to the hips if you were wanting to put on some music you can put on some music walking your hands forward just a little bit further out in front of you and then sliding the hands apart finding the edges of your yoga mat and give a little bit of pressure down with your palms like you were going to slide them forward and feeling that that strength from the shoulders from the upper back and keeping the pressure on your hands like you're now going to slide them backwards and feel again how the shoulders respond the shoulder blades in the back of the rib cage and lifting your head keeping the pressure on your hands and then sliding your left hand over on top of your right hand giving pressure down with both palms let your head rest again to the floor you can return your forehead to touch the ground now, most of us have the elbows straight, but of course you can negotiate a little bend, breathing into the underarms. And carefully lift your head to switch sides. The left hand slides over to its left side edge, and then the right hand comes over on top of it, and pressing down, and returning your forehead. Make sure you can keep your head between your arms. You might rock your head a little side to side, let your Head tap the upper arm bones. Just one more breath. Keeping the hips close to the heels unless you're feeling that pressure in the knees is uncomfortable. Again, just let your head rise to slide the hands apart. And then we'll rise up onto all fours. Coming off the heels. Um, knees together and let the hips swing a little bit side to side. You can kind of lean left and right as you bring the knees a little bit closer. They don't have to touch. And then just let the hips tick tock a couple of times, left and right. You might feel the shifting of the hands or the, rather the pressure from palm to palm. And you can let your head just hang toward the floor. And we'll steady the rocking so we can stretch the right leg behind. At first with the toes tucked under, rocking front to back through the heel and we notice that at first there's a kind of a shifting of the whole body and right? so you're just rocking the torso the hips the shoulders everything front to back and then there's a little bit of 
action coming from the foot itself, right? The toes pushing, the arch strong. And we're gonna pause so we can bring the top of that right foot onto the floor. So just lift enough so you can point the toes and then applying the pressure onto the top of the foot. Let the hips swing a little side to side so you can roll on the top of that right foot and the toes. And this sometimes causes the arch of the foot to cramp in an uncomfortable way. And the remedy is to go back to the first position. Right? So if you need to, before we dismount, you can tuck the toes and give a little front to back. So we're gonna switch the knees, the right leg underneath you, the left leg extending behind. And you might look forward as you rock. And, and of course the wrists might be taking some pressure. So walking the hands forward to give yourself a little more space is always an option. And of course, breathing steady as you move, getting some creaks and cracks from the ankles is totally normal. So and discerning that action of the whole body rocking versus the pressure on the foot and the toes. And then we'll go on to the top of the left foot. So again, just lifting the foot enough so you can point and really smear the top of the foot as the hips rock side to side. So this sort of spiral motion, radial axis of the shin bones. And, and again, if that foot cramps, you can always point the toes. And we'll take that left knee underneath. Rounding into cat pose proper, chin to the chest, a little deeper squeeze to the abdomen. And as you begin your next inhalation, the hips tilting, the head lifting once the lungs are full. And we'll go back and forth a few times, finding the rhythm. We want you to feel uh, in your cat pose as though you could lift your knees, right? So when you bring your chin to your chest, like you could push the tops of your feet into the ground as if the knees could lift. And they might actually lift, but they don't have to. And then we'll continue to arch into our cow. So each time you're in cat, give that kind of power to the abdomen, like as if you were going to lift your knees. And sometimes that's a lot for the feet, right? So take it easy on the toes. And just one more cycle back and forth. And the next time that you're in your cow pose, we're gonna curl the toes of both of the feet, bringing the hips back again to the heels. Child's pose, walk the arms as far forward as they'll go, still keeping your knees, or rather, excuse me, your hips to your heels. And a similar exploration of the palms pressing flat as if sliding forward or pressing flat as if sliding backward. And just your ability to create those different actions is, you know, nothing short of miraculous. And one more deep breath in. We're going to lift up on the exhalation. A little bit of the rounding of your cat can take some pressure off the knees. Find your cow pose, take a deep breath in, looking forward. And on our way, downward facing dog, try to lift your knees at the exact same time and we'll raise the hips. And, and a, a few breaths in our downward dog, pedaling the feet, working through the heels, pressure to the arches, and a little shifting to the hips side to side. And steady your legs so we can find our plank pose. Shifting forward just a moment, feel the spacing if the feet need to adjust. Looking forward along the floor, a few feet out beyond the hands. Give it a deep breath in. Returning to your downward dog, lifting the hips as you exhale. And now we're gonna take the right leg back and up into the sky. Roll your hips open for just a moment. Feel free to bend your right knee. And keep your knee bent. We're gonna curl into our plank pose, bringing that right knee toward the chest. Holding for just a moment, you can bring your forehead toward your knee. So rounding a little bit to your cat pose. Stretch the right foot back into plank, look forward, hold for just one more breath in. And then downward facing dog, we're gonna raise the hips, exhaling. 
Take your time adjusting the feet so that right foot is solid and the left leg is free to rise. Again, you can roll the hips open. Feel free to bend your knee. It's okay to get taken away a little bit with gravity. Keep the palms solid. It's beautiful, you all. Keep your knee bent as you curl the left leg forward, plank pose. And again, you can round a little bit, cat pose as well. Bringing the rib cage up between the shoulder blades, forehead towards your knee. And you can try to do this at the exact same time. You're gonna look forward and extend your leg to plank. Hold for just one more big breath in. Your downward facing dog as you exhale, raise the hips. So amazing effort, you all. Looking back at your feet, step your feet to the side edges of your yoga mat. Lift your heels as high as you can and then swing both of them to the right. Your hips are gonna go a little bit to the right, just briefly, and then bring the heels up so the toes are pointing forward. Sometimes the feet slide so you can always walk them a little bit ahead. Heels to the left. And right? so the right foot almost touches the floor like warrior one. And we're gonna lift both of the heels. Good, keep the feet wide, plank pose. Lower your knees, lower your hips. Again, keep the feet wide as we find our low cobra. Toes pointing, bring your forehead to touch the ground. If the wrists need a little relief, you could lift your hands and give the wrists a little circle. Give it just another breath. And then we'll plant the hands for our cobra pose, elbows hugging in, and we'll raise the chest, lifting your head lightly. Shoulders back from your ears, give it a full breath in, and exhaling to lower it down. Slide your feet together, curl the toes. We'll come up downward facing dog. You can always lift from your knees, absolutely. So we're gonna try this one more time, the right leg lifting back and away. Open the hips, bend your knee. We're finding that core plank, so the right knee coming forward toward your chest. Nose toward your knee, you can push the floor away with the hands. Another opportunity to practice, extend your right leg as you look forward. Deep breath in, downward facing dog, raise the hips. Try to rise at the exact same time. Your left leg is going to lift. You got it, roll your hips open, bend your knee. And that left thigh is coming forward toward your chest as you find plank. And again, you can round between the shoulder blades. And we're trying to extend the left leg back into plank as you look forward, take a deep breath in. Downward facing dog as you exhale. Separate the feet, side edges of the yoga mat. Lift both of your heels as high as you can, swing them to the right, let your hips move to the right. Good, lift your heels up and to the center, over to the left. Let your hips move a little bit to the left. Good, breathing is beautiful. You all come back to the center, keep the feet wide, plank pose, knees and hips, forehead touches down as you point your toes. Give the wrist, hug the elbows in. Wide-legged cobra pose. Press the tops of the feet into the earth as you raise the chest. Shoulders down from your ears. Just one more big breath in. We'll exhale to lower it down. Downward facing dog. Bring the feet in. Curl the toes. And of course, you can lift from your knees. And looking to your hands, we're going to walk it forward. Tiptoe style all the way to the front of the mat. And let your arms hang for a moment. Again, you can give the wrists a little twirl freeing some of that pressure. If you wanna keep the wrists passive, just let them hang, lightly touching the floor with the fingertips. Relax your jaw. You can bend your knees a little bit so you have more, more support as you rock front to back, heels to toes, toes to heels. Just noticing that pressure. And stay with the pressure in the heels now before we stand up, hands to the hips. You can wedge your thumbs into that crease at the front of the pelvis just to really mark that spot. And then we'll come up with a flat back, extending the spine tabletop and continuing on all the way up. Rest your arms by your side. Just take a moment, feel your body standing. Close your eyes and breathe. 
And then eyes open, we'll take a trip to the front of the mat if you're not there already. And hands together, prayer position at your heart. And we'll keep it really traditional right now, arms reaching forward and up. A little bit of a back bend at the top here, inhaling, folding on your exhalation, circle the arms out wide, fingers next to the toes. And your left foot stepping back into a low lunge. Touch your knee to the floor, find your fingertips as you look up. Keep breathing. On our way to plank pose, we'll step back at right foot to meet the left. And we practiced that exact move just a second ago. Knees, chest, and chin. If you can, keep your hips in the air as you lower the sternum. On your way to cobra pose, we'll lower the hips, pointing the toes. Thighs nice and strong as you lift. On your way to downward dog, we'll curl the toes, raising the hips up, up, and away. And we're stepping the left foot forward into our low lunge. So take the time you need if you don't quite make it to give that leg a boost. The right knee touches down and again, find your fingertips, shoulders back from your ears. Good, raise your knee to step forward. I'm gonna circle the arms to stand. Big breath in to lift, hands together, exhaling down to the heart. Good, let it rest. And if you need to take a trip to the front of the mat, Start fresh. We'll bring the hands together, reaching forward. Big breath in as you lift, you can lean. Circle the arms folding. Your right foot stepping back, low lunge. Touch your knee softly. Keep breathing on your way to plank pose. Find the balance on both feet, both of the hands, then lower. Knees, chest and chin or knees and hips. On your way to cobra. Toes pointing, chest rising, nice and solid through the arms. Downward facing dog, we're on our way. You can lower the belly button and then lift. Your right foot is gonna step forward and we're finding that same low lunge. So if you need to take that left knee down, use the right arm to adjust and then finding your fingertips as you look up. Stepping forward, lift your knee. Both feet to the top of the mat will stand, circle the arms, big breath in, hands together, and to your heart exhaling. Good, now step your feet to the side edges of your yoga mat, please. Your toes are pointing out in that V. You're gonna stretch your arms up into a big X, right? So we're, we're thinking from palm to palm, from foot to foot. Bring your thumbs with your fingers together. So flat hands, kind of like a spatula and straighten your elbows as much as you can. You're gonna take your right hand over to your left hand. Keep your head between your arms, bring your head to your left arm bone and try to press your palms together. I'm gonna to show you a different angle. Take the arms out wide into the X, lift your chin to open the chest, feel the shoulder blades on your upper back. Keep your elbows straight, your left hand over to your right hand. And if you can, keeping the elbows straight, you're pressing your palms together, right? Really firmly, your head can rest on your right arm. Open up to the X, we're gonna try one more time each way, we'll go a little faster, the right hand over to the left hand. Elbows straight, if you are able, push into the right foot. Open up, breathing in, close it, your left hand over to your right hand. Pressing as much as you can, your head can rest on your arm. Good, open up to the X, deep breath in. Exhale, we're gonna squat, bending the knees, bend your elbows a little bit, goddess pose. We're gonna straighten up through the legs and reach the arms to the X, big breath in, spread your fingers. As you exhale, bend your knees, a little bit of the squat. You don't have to go very low since the feet aren't so far apart. Big breath in at the top and your exhalation to the squat. Good, now we're gonna try something a little different. So hold at the top here. You're gonna to lean to your left and lift your right heel, raise your right knee, bend your right elbow. You're gonna to try to find a little bit of that goddess pose on the side. Put your right foot down as you straighten your right leg. Lean to your right. Find that right heel. Lift your left knee, bend your left elbow. Goddess pose, you're trying to touch your knee and your elbow together. We'll try one more time on each side. It's amazing, you all, great job. 
lean to the left. You can squat on that left leg. That's actually gonna help you if you wanna touch your knee and your elbow together. And then that right foot down, lean to the right. Your right knee can bend. Take it easy, right? We'll try this again. You say, oh boy. Left leg come down. Deep breath in, we'll fold it forward. Exhale the fingers to the ground. And take a moment to let the shoulders rest. Walk the fingers over to the right side. Let your hips swing to the left. You can bend your left knee quite a bit. And since we've got some space between the feet, go ahead and straighten your right leg. Walking the hands over to the left side, the hips swing to the right. And that right knee bending, make sure to keep the pressure in the heel. And the left leg could straighten a lot more, maybe pressing that left foot firmly into the ground. Good. Come on back to the center. And we're standing up, hands to the hips. Keep it really simple. Use the squat so you can articulate. Right? And this is part of the strength that takes out the squinchiness. So we're going to try this with the knuckles on the pelvis. So the palms open. We we do this all the time for our back bend, but I want me to, I want us to try cat pose. So scoop the pelvis. Take your chin to your chest. You can round the upper back as much as possible. You feel like your tailbone is trying to hide from your knuckles. Now push the tailbone into the knuckles. As you open the chest, lift your chin, fan the elbows back, and feel that interaction with the knuckles and the hips. One more time to cat. So we scoop deeply. You can bend your knees a little bit. Feel the strength as you hug your belly button toward your spine. Good. We're going to stand it up, press the pelvis back. It's cow pose from standing. Now hold this position, join the hands, interlacing the fingers. We'll reach down to the knuckles. Good. Chest high, chin up, bend your knees and folding. Arms can move up into the sky, knuckles to the air. Relax your jaw and look to the right. You can swing your hips left and bend your left knee. And arms can swing to the left. Uh, looking to the left, let your arms swing to the right. You can bend your right knee. You can straighten your left leg and make sure that you're breathing. And returning to the center, your arms to your body, standing up, head lifting, shoulders back. Release the hands. We'll step the feet together and join the palms prayer position at the heart. Reaching forward and up, big breath in, taking the back bend. Circle the arms wide as you exhale, fingers to the floor. Left foot to your low lunge, touch your knee to the ground. Stay on your fingertips. We're on our way, plank pose. Right foot to meet the left foot, hold for the breath in. Right to the ground, knees, chest, and chin, or one piece. Your cobra, your upward facing dog. Leave that alone for the vinyasa folks. Downward facing dog will come back and up. Left foot forward, low lunge, right? So we find the complement on the second side. And again, help that left foot to get in place so you're protecting the knee. The right knee lifting a step forward will stand all the way. Circle the arms, inhaling to lift, and the hands to the heart, exhaling. Right, let it rest for a moment. Find the top of your mat and start fresh, hands together. Reaching up on the inhalation, Rise up out of the hips. You don't have to go so far back. Folding forward, bend the knees. Right foot stepping, low lunge. Keep the toes tucked under. Feel like you can grab the floor with that back foot. Plank position, we're stepping back. And again, you can lower knees, chest, and chin, or one piece. Again, stay low in your back bend, right? Anchor the pelvis. And feel the length, downward facing dog. Rise up, up, and away. Stepping the right foot forward, low lunge. Fingertips to help open the chest. Stepping forward once again, and we'll stand all the way. Circle the arms, hands together, and to your heart. And release the arms, circling them overhead. Grab your opposite elbow, grab your opposite wrist, and leaning to your left side, Hips can move to the right. Keep the side stretch. Look down at your left foot so you twist a little bit. 
Good. We're going to find our center, rise up to the middle and pause, right? Feel the hips square, the shoulders square, side stretch to the right. So we're just being really accurate by taking that time. Breathing, you can grab the elbows, you can grab the wrists. And just looking down at your right foot, you're, you're letting the armpits kind of shine toward the floor. We're going to rise up, find the center, arms to the X, separate your feet. Right? So the arms out a little bit wider, swing your right hand over to your left hand. See if you can push into your right foot. Good. Open it up to the X. It's really important to find this center and then take your left hand over to the right hand. Elbows nice and straight. Open up to the center, bend your knees, goddess arms. Straighten your legs, breathing in. Again, into the squat as you exhale. Arms straight, lean to the left. Your right knee bending, your right elbow together. Put your foot down, arms straight. Lean to the right, left elbow, left knee raising. One more time each way. It's a little bit easier once you are able to find your momentum. You can bend on the standing leg. Really important. Last time here, left knee lifting, left elbow together. It's a great job, you all. Reaching up, circle the arms behind you. As you look down, bring your feet together. Join your hands, interlacing the fingers. Reach down in the knuckles, chest high, big breath in and we'll fold it forward, arms away from your body. You can look to the right, let the hips shift. You can look to the left, let the hips shift, let the right knee bend. Return to the center, your arms to your body, hands releasing to the floor, your left foot stepping. And now this is warrior one. So turn the heel flat to the floor and we'll rise up nice and strong arms into the sky. Straightening your right leg, turn to the left side, arms out, shoulder height. Warrior two, bending your right knee. Your right elbow is gonna bend, taking your forearm to your thigh and that left arm vertical. Hold for a moment. Good, return to your warrior two, take the arms out, shoulder height. And again, level off the shoulder blades down your back. Lean back your left hand to your thigh. And as that right arm reaches vertically, you might bend your right knee another inch forward. Warrior two, return. Good. Level the hips, feel the length on the sides of the torso, side angle your forearm to your thigh. We keep breathing. We're gonna rise up, warrior two. Good. Lean back your left hand to your thigh. Keep breathing. Now you can bring your right forearm to your thigh or your right hand to the floor and a holding side angle, just another two breaths. That left arm could reach on the angle alongside your ear. Big breath in and we'll return downward facing dog, your hands to the floor, hips to the sky. Take your time in stepping back. A lot to negotiate between here and there. You're very welcome to stay here or finding child's pose. Otherwise, plank pose through the vinyasa cycle. Keep the palms rooted, chest open, and the elbows back. Right? Feel your back bend, right? Know what you're doing before you get into it. Right? A, little bit of a, a little bit of a plan. Breathing. You're stepping the left foot and the right foot to the top of the mat. Hands to your shins, just halfway rising. Feel that monkey pose with the breath in and then the right foot stepping back as you exhale. Warrior one, ground the heel. Take a moment to feel the foundation, arms overhead. Your left leg straight, open to the right side, arms out, shoulder height. It's beautiful, you all. Bending the left knee, warrior two. We're headed to that side angle first, your forearm to your thigh and keeping that right arm vertical. So we're just trying to recognize that, that axis to the ceiling. 
into the earth, rising up warrior two. So now your spine finds that axis. Lean back your right hand to your thigh and your left arm sets that vertical axis. Keep breathing, feet strong as you rise up. Stick warrior two for just a second. Say, okay, nice to see you. Side angle, that right arm to the sky. Keep breathing, going up and back one more time. Rise your right hand to your thigh. If you didn't lose count, you don't have to wait for me. Good. And then you've got the options now, side angle as your forearm to your thigh once, once more, or your left hand on top of your foot. And you can keep that right arm vertical or take it alongside your ear. That left knee bend, find your left heel. One more breath in. And we'll exhale the hands to the earth, downward facing dog, hips to the sky. Let's stay together here, plank pose. Lower your knees, child's pose. We're going to point the toes, hips back to your heels, elbows to the floor. And breathe, and you can take your hands back by your feet if that suits you for the moment. And just a couple more breaths here. And so we're going to rise up nice and slowly, hands and knees. And separate your hands, separate your knees. So as you bring your knees to the side edges of your yoga mat, separate your feet as well. So your calves are directly behind your knees. And we're going to press into the knees as if sliding the knees together. And we're moving into cat pose very cautiously as we feel that inner thigh strength. And now relaxing some of that effort Breathing in, breathing out, looking at your hands, press both of your palms down as if now you were going to slide your hands together, right? So the same thing you did with your legs, you're doing with your arms. And often it's necessary to bend the elbows so you can feel this kind of circular energy through the chest. Now back off all that effort, and that's a tremendous effort, right? We're going to round again into cat. Press into your shins, press into your knees, and again, contract the inner thighs as if you were going to slide the knees together. And now add the hands, pressing the hands as if sliding your thumbs together. And we're going to arch into cow, keeping that strength on the inside of the body. So take it easy as you try to lengthen out cow pose. One more full breath in, and we're going to let everything relax on the exhalation. Lean to your left. Move the right knee to center. Lean to the right knee, move your left knee to center. Good, round your back, lift your right knee toward your nose. Good, now when you set your right knee back to the floor, move your hips back toward your heels. Walk your hands forward. Stay with me, I know it's a little complicated. You're gonna lift your left knee, round your back, knee to your nose as you lift your hips and shift your body forward. Shift back to lower your left knee. Look forward as you move to child's pose. Raise your right thigh, knee toward your nose, cat pose. Good, one more time, we're gonna shift back and look forward halfway into child's pose. Round your back as you raise your left knee toward your nose. All right, amazing effort. Sit back again, halfway to child's pose. Good, we'll rise up, shift the pressure to the palms, extend your right leg behind you. Roll your hips open, bend your right knee and bring your thigh toward your shoulder. Close your right thigh. We're gonna do that one more time with the right leg. Extend it behind you. Roll your hips open first and then bend your knee. Try to swing your thigh toward that shoulder. Take your right knee down to the ground. Cat pose for a moment, breathing. Take some pressure off the wrists. Cow pose will shift. The left leg extends behind you. Roll your hips open first, then bend your knee. Notice the leaning that's happening in the arms and the shoulders. As you swing the left knee underneath you, extend it behind you, just one more circle. Open the hips first, then swing your thigh up to your shoulder. 
Good, close that left knee to the ground. Downward facing dog, curl the toes, hips to the sky, breathing. Good, find your plank pose, looking forward. Hips high, downward facing dog. Raise the right leg behind you. Just one time, open the hips, bend your knee, bring your right knee toward your armpit. Shift halfway into plank, bring your right knee underneath you, nose to your knee, and then extend your right leg high into the sky. Set your right foot to the floor, pose just for a second, really to help you find the spacing in the feet. You can adjust the toes, return to your downward dog, your left leg rising. Just one time, open the hips, bend your left knee. Your left thigh dive bombs toward that armpit. Shifting into plank, your nose toward your knee as you hug that left knee into your chest. Raise the left leg high into the sky as you return to downward dog, amazing. And your left foot returns to the floor. Plank pose will set it down, knees and hips. Amazing effort, you all, incredible. Good, forehead to the floor. Step your hands back by your thighs. So extend your arms alongside your torso with the palms turned down. And bend your elbows. Keep your forehead on the floor unless you need to see what I'm showing you here. And so as you push the elbow, or as you push the hands down and bend your elbows, try to pull the shoulders back away from your ears. Give strength to the legs now, pressing the tops of the feet to engage the thigh muscles. Now lift your head, keep breathing, just looking down your nose a few inches in front of you on the floor. Half locust, lift your right leg, flex your right ankle, hold a moment like you could disengage your right thigh bone from your hip socket, reaching out of that right heel. Toes pointing before you set it down, both feet feeling the pressure, your left leg lifting. Extend and flex that left ankle. And again, imagining like you could disengage your left thigh bone from the hip socket. Breathe into that space. Toes pointing, set it down one more time each side. A little bit faster, the right leg lifting to flex. Try to keep your left foot pressing down. Toes pointing, set it down. Both feet press momentarily and then your left leg lifting. Flexing, reaching through the heel. Amazing effort, the toes pointing and set it down. Forehead returning to the floor. Walk your hands up near your chest. Return to your hands and knees. All right, folks, I know this is a lot on the wrist. I hope everybody's doing okay. It's the last one I wanted to get into here with you. So um, we're going to try this lifting the right knee only. Right? So you're going to raise your right knee just a couple inches off the ground and then set it right back down. And then raise your left knee just a couple down. You say, this is no big deal, okay? And set it back down. Now, you're going to raise your right knee. Try not to lean anywhere. Front, back, side to side. Set your right knee on the floor. And notice where the strength comes from to raise your left knee without leaning. It's like you're trying to re-engage that thigh bone with your hip socket. Can we do one more on each side? And, and again, this, this plugging in of the thigh bone to the hips, I think will serve us now. Right knee down, left knee up. See, that wasn't so bad, okay, good. Now walking the hands forward, downward facing dog, toes tucking under, hips to the sky. Beautiful. Now keep your downward dog. You're gonna lift your right foot just an inch. Again, as if you could plug your thigh bone into the socket, keep your knee straight, set your right foot down. Notice where the strength comes from in the pelvis. You're trying to lift your left foot just an inch off the floor without letting it swing front, back, side to side, or without too much leaning in any direction. Set your left foot down. We'll look to the hands walking forward. Baby steps or big steps, once you get there, let go of the floor and give the wrists a little freedom. Circling around a couple times this way, a couple times that way. And of course, you can get into those claw-like fingers. Uh, we'll take the thumbs to that crease in the front of the pelvis, pressing in as you stand up through that flat back, and we'll rise all the way. 
Right? Take a moment to find your body standing. Again, close your eyes as you feel mountain pose. You can open the palms to the front, give a little squeeze between the shoulder blades as you stand up proudly. Lifting the toes, activate the feet. And eyes open, relax the toes. And if you need to step forward, that's wonderful. We'll join the hands prayer position at the heart. Reaching forward, big breath in as you lift. Circle the arms, exhale into your fold. Your left foot stepping, this is warrior one. Root the heel, arms overhead. And you remember our earlier pattern. Once you find your balance, straighten the right leg. Turn to the left, this is warrior two. Arms level, bend your knee. You can look to the right hand as we head to our side angle, your forearm to your thigh. That left arm can stay vertical, or if you'd like now, take it alongside your ear. We are going up and back, rise. Again, articulate that warrior two, and then take it back. So again, we're just trying to reference that vertical axis. And again, if that right arm now wants to curl crescent moon style over your head, beautiful. Good, warrior two, on your way, side angle. Good, forearm to your thigh, and we'll tick-tock back and forth. Good, that left arm can lead you on its way to warrior two. So again, you're just acknowledging that vertical line on your way back. Keep the right knee bent. Hammer that right heel into the floor. Good, now again, you can modify your forearm to your thigh, or you can take your right hand down to your ankle Side angle extended. And two breaths. Keep that front leg strong. And eventually your left hand is gonna circle down to the ground. Downward facing dog is where we're headed. Hips nice and high. You got it. Take your time. Keep breathing. And your inhalation to plank, to the earth, cobra, upward facing dog. Feel the strength from the thighs, from the glutes. And we'll return downward facing dog. Left foot, right foot to the top of the mat. Ardha Uttanasana, monkey pose. Big breath in, fingertips on toes. Hands to shin, slide it down your right foot stepping. Warrior one. Keep breathing, arms overhead, you can look to the sky. Straighten your left leg, warrior two, arms out level, bend your knee. We're heading to our side angle first. Don't let me rush you. I'm gonna cue just a little bit ahead of time. Again, that right arm could angle next to your ear. Come up warrior two, right? So each time you pass through the middle, Right, really articulate and then take it back, your right hand to your thigh. Keep breathing, right? Part of it's for the alignment, coming up warrior two. Part of it's for the discipline, left arm to your thigh. Keep the strength through both legs, right? Inner thighs, all the way to the outer edges of the feet. One more time, we'll go backwards, right hand to your thigh. And as we move into our last side angle, you might stay for a few breaths. Your forearm to your foot. <laughs> that right arm could extend alongside your ear, open the chest. And one more full breath in. We're exhaling on the way back, downward facing dog, hips to the sky. And Let's stay together here, plank pose, lower the knees only, shifting back to lower the elbows. And join your hands, interlacing your fingers, and curling the toes, lifting the knees, dolphin pose. And looking up to your thumbs, walk your feet backwards, finding your low plank. Now, of course, you can put your knees on the ground and especially if your lower back is feeling squinchy, um, it would be good to put your knees down and round a little bit into cat pose. Right? And if you wanna give yourself a little bit of a challenge here, separate your feet just a couple of inches, let your heels swing a little bit to the left, let your hips move left. 
Let your heels come through the center, swinging over to the right. Let your hips swing a little bit to the right. Come back to the center. You're going to raise your right leg, bend your right knee, and swing your right thigh up to your armpit. And you say, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. And then your right leg is going to go back, and then you're going to lift your left foot. For those that are with me, you're going to bend that left knee up toward your left armpit. And you say, no, no, okay, okay, that's fair. And then you say, that was fun. Once was enough. Or maybe you want to do one more. We're going to lie down if you're ready, knees and hips to the floor, elbows out to the side, make a little pillow with your forearms for your forehead and breathe. Bend both of your knees, heels toward your tush, give the ankles a little twirl. You can go a few times this way and then a few times the other way. Keep breathing, relax the ankles, swing your calves. So with the attention, the quality that we've been focusing on in the hip joint, right, through the thigh bone and the pelvic socket, we can find one more major element here with the range of motion in rotation. So again, this spiral axis, pressing the thighs into the floor, you know, feel the hips pop up and, and that may or may not feel good for the lower back. And right? so keeping the pelvis, the hips on the ground and maybe moving the heels away from the hips is what feels the best for the low back here. So keep the legs in motion, the calves side to side, as you straighten your legs to the floor. And maybe somewhere halfway to the ground, you find, oh, that's the perfect spot for the hips, right? Or the perfect spot for the thighs. And eventually the toes will find the floor, the legs resting. Maybe the heels continue to wag from the momentum. And just one more breath. Sometimes even once you're completely still, it's like having sea legs, you know? Or you just got off the boat or just got off the horse. Still feel like you're walking that way. And lifting your head to move the arms, hands near your chest will push the floor away. We're headed to our downward dog, crawling forward gently, the toes tucking under. And we'll lift the knees. Looking toward your hands, walking it forward, or you can complete the pattern, right foot, left foot. And from there, we'll stand, circle the arms, big breath in, hands together and to your heart. And one more time, separate the feet to that V shape. And then arms overhead, grab your right forearm. And I've been making a point of this, keeping your thumb and those other four fingers in a group as you clasp your forearm, lean to the left, reach to the left. You can push your forearm up and that left arm can pull down a little bit. And as you breathe into the right side of your rib cage, once you've got that strength, you don't need to work so hard at the arms. Good. We're going to lift up goddess pose with the elbows out to the side, up and down just for a second. You can wiggle the fingers, grab your left forearm, reaching up, up and away over to the right. And compress into that left foot. And again, the right hand, those fingers and thumb group together, gently pulling down and that left forearm firmly pressing up, breathing through the side body. And we'll lift up to the center, free the arms behind you. Look down while you join the hands, interlacing the fingers. And as usual, we could switch up the grip to give each hand a, its own turn. Reaching the knuckles down, lifting the chest, big breath in, we'll fold it forward, arms away from your body, your head toward the floor, knuckles to the sky. You can keep it basic, just hang in the center. There's plenty to do here. If you wanna add a little bit, look to the right, your arms swing left. If the hips move to the left, bend that left knee, press into the heel. Right, moving to the other side, look to the left. The arms can swing right. And again, you're pressing into that right foot. So the right leg has you. Keep breathing. As you move to the center, the arms stay together on their way to your back. Then let the hands go. 
a little bit of the squat. You can keep the feet flat or lift the heels. But as you lower down here, let your back round. So hands to the floor, head toward the floor. So we're deliberately trying to bring in our cow pose, or excuse me, our cat pose rounding in the squat. But give a little bit of strength in the thighs, push into the feet, feel the calves and the hamstrings hug together. So there's a lot of strength coming through the knees. And then gently lift your chest, opening up a little bit of cobra pose, the space across the collarbones. And if you've got the heels on the floor, this is a really big deal. It's a little bit easier with the heels up, so you could always adapt. All right, we're gonna sit down and you might take the full ride, rocking back, releasing the floor with your hands, grabbing hold of your thighs. All right, we are gonna meet sitting. So if the rocking feels good for now, you can go a few more times. Otherwise, uh, we'll, we'll meet with the legs extended. Pachimottanasana, uh, the hips back and the feet out front, giving the legs a little bit of freedom, pointing and flexing the feet. And then keeping the feet flexed, bend your knees a couple inches from the floor. Good, sitting tall, we'll circle the arms for the sky, take a deep breath in, your exhalation to fold you forward, taking the hands out to the feet, your head toward your knees. And so if you feel if that it's right for you, you can straighten your legs, bringing the backs of the knees toward the ground. Notice, however, if that causes the feet to splay apart or the knees to roll open. And, and, and this is probably one of the best, if not the second best for our lower back, provided that we're not asking too much from the back. And that's all to say, bend the knees. <laughs> Two more breaths. And if the lower back is tender, um, I would recommend as we release the pose, walk the hands up the legs, right, as you sit up. If you're taking the traditional way, reaching forward to rise. But again, this exit takes a lot more power. Right? So take it easy on your body. We'll join the hands. And then releasing the hands, bend your right knee. So Janu Sirshasana. And we are trying to keep the hips square going forward. Right? Settling the hips, the arms circle overhead. Full breath in. And we'll fold on the exhalation, your hands out to your foot, maybe to your ankle. And we'll add the twist in just a moment. Again, let the left knee bend if that's what it needs so you can keep the foot vertical. Right? Consider the feeling in that hip socket. Your right hand can grab your left ankle or the outside edge of your foot. Your left hand goes behind your hips on the floor and you can look underneath that left shoulder, giving a little bit of a twist to the fold, almost like you wanted to bring your right armpit toward your knee. Remember your left leg can be strong, right? So spread the toes on your left foot. Right, press through the ball mount of that left foot into an imaginary floor. Right? And we feel that we're activating through the nervous system, right? Encouraging the circulation. And both hands to that left foot. And square up the hips and shoulders. And again, you have the option of reaching the arms forward, which is a little more challenging to rise from there or you walk your hands up your leg and sitting up a little bit more carefully. Now we're gonna take the right leg and put that right foot on the other side of the left leg. Right? Matse Indrasana, your left arm is gonna hug your knee and then your right hand on the floor behind you. Sit as tall as you can and then rotating the rest of the way. And you can look over your shoulder. And if you know binds and all the rest of that, you're welcome to take a deeper position in the pose. Try to press your right foot firmly into the floor. And so the right leg becomes active from the hip. And then you're sitting up as tall as you can from there. It's beautiful, you all. 
Length to the back of your neck. Nice and proud to lift the chest. One more breath. And now we're coming back to the center. Hands to the right leg. Good. Help that right leg to extend out in front of you. Lean back onto your hands. Let the knees bounce down. Uh, feet side to side, windshield wipers. And then we'll find our forward bend, the knees bending, the feet like the number 11. Reaching up on your inhalation and folding with your exhalation. Here too, you could walk it down. Right? The arms overhead presents particular challenges to the core. And if the core isn't up for it, the lower back pay pays the price. And that's just, you know, mostly always true. <laughs> One more breath, just using this to reset, recalibrate. And again, you can walk the hands up the legs or reaching forward, inhaling to rise, the hands together to the heart. Right. Last one here, left side, left knee bending, your foot to your right thigh, and doing your best to keep the hips fairly square. If that left leg needs a little cushion, the right knee can bend all great modifications and the arms up top or walking it down, folding with the exhalation, your hands out to that, that right foot. Feel that you can hold the center line for just a couple breaths before we add the variation. left hand to the ankle or the pinky side of that right foot. Your right hand on the floor behind your hips. And there's a little turn to the right as you look underneath that right shoulder, but once you've found the pose, of course, you can close your eyes. Elbows can bend. It's true for all of our yoga poses, that we're addressing the muscles, the bones, the joints, the ligaments, connective tissues, as well as all the, the various organs. And this pose in particular for the bladder, uh, for the kidneys and the lower back, right? And I mention it because I, I sometimes get the sense that you can almost feel the truth of that more than other poses don't show up as clearly. Another breath. If you've been working hard at the pose, take a break, back off a little bit. Your right hand coming up to your right foot. Again, settle the shoulders, balance the hips. And again, the exit strategy, reaching forward or walking the hands up your leg. Rising up tall, we'll take the hands together. And this last twist here, the left leg over the right thigh. So you can position that left foot firm on the floor. It doesn't have to be so high near the hips. It might be closer to your knee. Right? The right arm hugging the shin, your left hand behind you. And before you go all the way in the twist, flex your right ankle and sit up as tall as you please. Then rotate. If you can push that left foot firmly into the floor, you can push your right thigh against that ankle. And that strength in the hips, right, will set the pelvis so you can rise up even taller in the seat. Right? And of course, that's gonna give you even more rotation based on the length that you find from there. Yeah, exactly. You feel like you could let go with your hands. Yeah, it's incredible, great effort. Keep breathing. One more full cycle. Stay with it. Anchor the pelvis, length to your neck, chest high, and we'll let it go. Release the hands, release the arms. Say thank you to your left leg, both legs out in front. Let your knees bounce like 
gently boiling water. Big breath in to lift the arms and we'll fold it forward. All right, hands to your feet, chin to your chest. Just two more breaths. Let it relax. You don't have to put all the effort you've put in up till now. Let your breath do the work. Rising up carefully, walking it up or reaching it up. You're going to eventually bring the hands to the floor, shifting the hips forward so you can lie back, either grabbing your shins or grabbing the thighs. You can tuck your chin, lowering down to the ground just as carefully as you please. A little rocking side to side. And please lower your feet. And extending your legs and separating your feet heels near the corners of your mat. And of course, if your legs are off of your mat, you can just guess the distance of your heels. Stretch your arms to the ceiling, give the wrists a little twirl. And then we're going to take the arms out wide into that great big X position. And this is one of the reasons we did it so many times from standing is so we can feel it here. Flex your feet. So press through the ankles and try to put some pressure to the backs of your heels. Keep the elbows straight, the palms flat like spatulas. You're going to take your right arm over to your left arm. You've got to lift your shoulders. You're going to rest your head on your left arm. Press your palms together. Take your chin a little bit into your chest back of your right heel into the floor. Open the arms to that X. Put your head on the ground. Press the knuckles into the floor. Lifting your left arm up and over. You're going to lift your head. Press your palms together. Keep the elbows straight. Beautiful. Open to the X. One more time each way. The right arm comes up. The shoulders need to lift. Good. Feel the breath into your upper back, into the shoulder blades. Open to the X. Don't let me rush you. Press the knuckles down when your head's on the floor. And then your left arm comes over. Yay. Breathing. Good. Take it easy. Open to the X. Right. If you just struck gold and you want to do that again on each side, that's wonderful. Right? If you're good, you just let yourself rest in that X position for a moment. And we are going to make one final twist. And walk your feet flat. Bring your feet close together. Arms slide down to the T position. We're going to move the hips up and over to the left, just a little step. So we offset the hips to lift the feet. Take your knees to the right. You can keep your left arm outstretched in the T position. Your right hand could come on top of the knee pile. And sometimes even still, you need to scoot your hips a little further to the left, or you feel like that right shoulder needs to slide free. Right? Take the time to make the adjustments. And just breathing. And after everything we've been through, if this feels like a piece of cake, you know, that's great. So releasing carefully, you can take your right hand underneath the knee pile, lifting the legs, taking the feet flat, using those robot arms to adjust the hips once to the middle, and then once more over to the right side of your mat. So I know it's a little confusing, but I, I know your old hat at this. So arms out wide and the legs to the left. You can flex the ankles initially as you hug the thighs together. Your left hand pile, your right arm outstretched to the side. And here we're, we're striving for that strong neutral in the lower back. So the inner thighs can hug together, keep the shoulders down, however the chest can rise. That's all contributing to that, that overall sense of length. And 
One more breath. Your left hand can scoop underneath the pile. Knees to your chest, rocking your hips to the center. And the head toward your knee. Grab the big toes. Opening up like goddess pose. Or perhaps extending the legs. Upavishta konasana. And very often in, in Happy Baby, we're naturally rounded in the lower back, more cat pose than anything else. However, if you back off the groin stretch, you might feel like you could extend the lower back, again, closer to that strong neutral, just something to explore. Um, after a couple more breaths, happiest baby ever. Uh, you can bring your legs in, you can bring your feet in, and we'll meet in our corpse pose. Uh, whether you're looking for that crooked corpse pose, Swara Shavasana, or full extended corpse pose, uh, take the time to put your socks on, your sweatshirt on. If you're feeling a little cool, we're still enjoying our Springtime showers. And, and we'll get settled in. If you're still on that playlist, um, you might feel the music is, is going to mellow out here, but you can always rest in silence. We'll stay with our breathing just a few more moments as we accommodate the body on the floor, feeling on the ground, supporting you from below. Really sensing the support from the earth itself, the dirt, the roots. For a moment, we can embody that sense of support. And as you continue to breathe freely, naturally, uh, sensing the air, the sky, uh, upward expansion, creative expression, Allow yourself to embody through all of your cells that same feeling of freedom. And now deep inside of your chest, just behind your physical heart, Envisioning a bright and beautiful light can be any color, all the colors, allowing that to shine throughout your whole body, calming all the muscles and the bones, revitalizing all of your organs connective tissues, nerves, arteries, veins. And letting that light shine beyond your body, surrounding you, keeping you safe and protected. And within that sphere of light shining from your heart, experiencing your entire being fully alive and deeply at rest, completely relaxed.
allowing your body to remain still. Returning your awareness to your breathing and to the source of that light inside of your chest. And letting that be a reminder. And sensing your body resting on the floor. Again, a sense of the earth, the roots, the worms. A sense of the air, the sky, the birds, the clouds. And feeling yourself at home and complete throughout your body. At home and complete on this magnificent earth. Expanding your inhalations, feeling strength with your exhalations. Letting that breath move through your legs, into your feet, helping to wiggle the toes, spreading the toes widely. Imagine your breath traveling through your arms, into your hands, wiggling fingers and pressing the thumbs to the fingerprints, noticing that texture. Rolling your head softly side to side. Imagine your breath traveling through your hair. With bigger movements, you can stretch the arms overhead if that feels right. Pointing and flexing the feet, climbing an imaginary ladder with the arms overhead. Again, mindful of the hips. You can bring the knees in to give the legs a hug when you're ready, rolling a little side to side. We'll, we'll meet sitting. You can roll to your right using your arm as a pillow, or you can grab your thighs, rocking front to back. Moving in slow motion, let your arms help you so you can keep your back passive, your spine relaxed. Welcome back, folks. We'll take a moment to close, joining the hands, the prayer position at the heart. Feel free to close your eyes, recalling any dedication, any intention, carrying that with you through the rest of your day. Additionally, acknowledging within yourself and within one another that which is peace, that is joy, that is love, and that is light residing inside of this space with both the knowledge and the experience that we are one with all things. And just one sound of Om, a deep breath in. And to that light, we bow. Namaste. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you, thank you. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to stick around. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Thomas.